let's take a look at some of the key features of VPC. Um, this is not everything about VPC, it's just to help load our minds about specific things about VPCs before we start working with them. So first thing is that VPCs are region specific. They do not span regions. You can use VPC pairing to connect to VPCs across regions. So that is your way of working around that. There's other tools out there besides just the standard VPC pairing. You can create up to five VPCs per region. You can increase the amount of VPCs based on uh, increasing service limits. Every region comes with a default VPC. You can delete this. I don't recommend that you do that. Um, and AWS does recommend that you use the default VPC, whereas other providers, uh, the recommendation's a little bit different. You can have up to 200 subnets per VPC. You can have up to five IPv4 CIDR blocks per VPC. Through service limits, you can increase this to 50. This is the same thing for IPv6 CIDR blocks. Um, most components don't cost anything. So VPCs, route tables, NACLs, internet gateways, security groups, subnets, VPC peering. Some things do cost money. So uh, NAT gateway, VPC endpoints, VPN gateway, customer gateway, IPv4 addresses, which is a new thing. Um, all IPv4 addresses have a cost. So kind of motivates you to use IPv6, elastic IPs. I should kind of emphasize here that, you know, if you have data going across region, it's not the VPC pairing, turning that feature on uh, that will cost you money, but going between regions might cost you money. Um, for DNS host names, um, this is a feature for EC2 instances where you can have a DNS host name on them and you can optionally turn this off. I like to point that one out because um, sometimes it catches me off guard, but there's a lot of stuff that goes into VPC. This is just key stuff that I want you to remember, okay?